here. It's Shanna Matchick Myers coming to you live from San Diego. We're on the second part of our course and it's all about inferential stats. So inferential statistics are used when we have access to a sample from a population. Remember, if we had the population data, we could just simply use good descriptive statistics. to organize and illustrate the data. We wouldn't need to make inferences about anything. All right, so here we go. Starting with chapter two, we'll look at the probability basics. So that zero is zero percent, okay? and one is 100%. So all probabilities lie between zero and one inclusive. Or zero is less than or equal to the probability of some event X occurring, which is in turn less than or equal to one. Therefore, an event that is impossible we'll have a probability of zero or zero percent. And an event that's certain to occur, we'll have a probability of one or 100%. Sometimes we work with decimals and sometimes we write those decimals as percentages. I always just remember that 1.00 equals 100% and vice versa. And that lets me know which way to move the decimal when going back and forth between percentages and decimals. Or just use your calculator. Let's give some of these ideas names and get started. Uh, I mean, started on the fun stuff. An event is any outcome. in which you're interested. The sample space is the collection of all possible outcomes. Okay, grab a quarter. You got it? Now flip it. Record your result, now repeat. What was the sample space for one flip? Well, we could get, we could get a head, or we could get a tail, right? Put it in set notation and you've got your space. What about two flips? What could happen? Well, in two flips, we could get head and then another head, right? We could get a head and then a tail. We could get a tail and then a head, or we could get two tails. Okay. Let X represent the event that you flip a fair quarter and get a tail. What is the probability of this happening in one flip? Well, let's see. There's only one way to get a tail in one flip, and there's two possible outcomes in one flip. You could have a head or a tail. So, let's see. Probability of our event X, which is the event of getting a tail, is going to equal to, well, there's only one way to get a tail out of two possible ways. So you would get one half 
or 50%. Now part D is a little trickier, right? Because what are we interested in? I mean, would we keep flipping until we got the tail and then stop flipping, right? So here, I, di I didn't define this one very well, right? Because there is two possible ways of getting a tail on the first flip, right? Out of four. And then there's a third way of only getting a tail. I mean, this one would be only getting a tail on the second flip. This question's not worded very well, so let's reword it. We'll cross this out and we will say, why don't we write it as what is the probability of only getting a tail on the second flip. So that's more defined. What is the probability of only getting a tail on the second flip? So in other words, getting a head on flip one and a tail on flip two. Well, the only way that that happens in our sample space is that second way I listed in the set, right? So the probability of a head and then a tail would equal to one way out of four. Does that make sense? All right, good, good. So let's think about this, all right? You were most likely operating on the assumption that the probability of flipping a fair quarter and getting a result of a tail was equal to one out of two in one flip, right? Why? How do you think people came up with this probability? Well, they're math geeks like me and they sat down and flipped a quarter a bunch of times and figured out what's called the empirical figured out that the empirical probability approaches the theoretical probability which equals one half or 50 percent. So empirical would be you're basically Keep flipping, 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 flipping. You do all these trials, right? They're independent trials because nothing happens to the quarter to change uh, the way it'll flip, right, in this scenario. So here you then would count the total number of times that you got a tail out of the total amount of times you flipped the coin. And you would find that the more you flip it, the closer that it approaches 50%, all right? So this concept basically describes something called the law of large numbers, 
or LLN. Be careful though, what I was describing here were independent trials, right? So the law of large numbers requires that the probability for each trial or flip, right, remains the same and the trials are thus independent. So let's think about it. Once you flip the quarter, have you changed the probability of flipping the quarter and getting a tail on the next flip? No, right? Not unless you put gum on it or something weird or weighted it or had a double-sided cone, coin, right? Okay, so in general, the probability of some simple event A occurring is the probability of A is equal to the number of ways A can occur over the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, so let's think about independent versus dependent events. So let's say we're going to go to the beach and we've got a cooler with six waters and six sodas. And let's just assume that they're mixed up and they're the same texture and shape. What's the probability of pulling out a soda on the first draw, if you don't look? Will the probability change on the second draw? What if we replace the soda and drew again? Well, okay, let's think about this. What if we reach into the cooler take something out, we don't care what we get, we drink it, and then we grab something else, right? So that would be sampling without replacement, wouldn't it? And so here you could get, there's two possibilities, right? We can get a soda, right? We could get a soda or we could get a water, right? And there's an equal probability, right? There's six out of 12 ways that we can draw each one of them because there's six of these cans, right? Or, or bottles of each type. So that would be what? Draw one, right? Well, on draw two, it just kind of depends on what you drew the first time, right? So if you drew, if you drew a soda the first time, right, there would now be five sodas left out of 11 total beverages, right, to get a soda and then a soda. But to get a soda and then a water, there's still six waters out of 11 beverages. And that's if you drew the soda first. If you drew the water first, and then a soda, right, you would have six out of 11 sodas, or a chance of six elevenths to get a soda on that second draw, and five elevenths for the water. So it, it makes a difference, right, as to what you picked on the first draw. And this is without modeling, without replacement. Right? 
So, now if we went with replacement, what would happen? So with replacement, we would have, again, the same starting point, right? You could have a soda or a water, six out of 12, six out of 12, right? But if you put what you got the first draw, so that would be your, your scenario for the first draw, but if you put that back, right, what's going to happen? You're still going to have 6 out of 12 for your probability of each of them because you put it back, right? So here, same thing, right? So these, the second scenario that I did in the pink is with replacement. And so each, each trial or each draw, right, would be independent. But on the first scenario, the first draw would be independent, right? But then that second draw represents a dependent model because it depends on what you drew the first time, okay? So anyway, we're not going to go through and find all those probabilities, you know, or the sample space for it until you have some more advanced, you know, probabilities. But um, this is actually a way of modeling called a, you know, a tree model. All right, so sometimes we need to find the probability that an event does not occur. This is considered the complement. So I had called that event A, so this would be the complement of event A, denoted not A. That's how you, you say it, not A. And the line above means not A or the complement of A. Okay? All right, so that's it for today. And um, I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you are tuning in. All right, bye.